hydrogen bonding is what's responsible for holding the strands of your DNA together. So between your DNA base pairs, the only reason they're held together is because of hydrogen bonds. Okay? Between your um, adenine, thymine, your cytosine, and guanine. In addition, all the proteins that are in your body are held together by a lot of different interactions. They can have ionic interaction. They can have hydrophobic or nonpolar interactions. They can form disulfide bonds, but they can also form a lot of hydrogen bonds. Okay? So literally the reason you are sitting here alive today is because of hydrogen bonding. All right? Uh, without water, without um, your DNA, without properly folded proteins, that would be a problem. That's why getting fevers is such a big deal. When they say, like, oh, if you've had a prolonged fever over 105 or something like that, go to the hospital. Guess what prolonged fevers do to leakages like this to your proteins? It breaks them. If your proteins are not folded properly, guess what happens? The capability of forming hydrogen bonds. And if so, we're able to do it this way. So the flow chart here, we start off with, are there ions present? Yes. There's polar molecules present. Then yes, we have ion dipole forces. If there's ions present but no polar molecules, then you have an ionic bond. Obviously, an ionic bond is very strong, going to be stronger than an intermolecular force. Ion dipole forces typically, like I said, tend to be stronger than some of the other ones. If we don't have any ions present but we do have polar molecules and we have H's bound N, O's, or F's, we have hydrogen bonding, typically stronger than dispersion and dipole dipole interactions. If we do have polar molecules, but none of them can hydrogen bond, so you just have dipole-dipole interactions. And then if you don't have polar molecules present, dispersion forces only. But once again, you have to be very really careful, because here, we've already seen that this breaking is considering that the molecules are approximately the same size. If they're much different sizes, then dispersion forces would actually be stronger than dipole dipole how are you guys doing today? So as you can currently see today, um, it's currently Monday, so of course I have to start the day off with a chem lecture. And um, I only had my four hour break, had Chick-fil-A for lunch, which was pretty good, had a few snacks right there. So yeah, all I did was just do homework and today I'm not in my bio lecture because I have an exam. Hooray. So um, that means I'm not going to film this because I don't want you know, to help people cheat, or otherwise I'm gonna be under trouble and that's gonna be pretty bad. So don't so don't cheat guys. But I can't stop you, so but hey that's your problem, not mine, so <laughs> but anyway, I'm not gonna be able to film this, so sorry guys. Guys, yeah, so as you can currently see, we are I'm done with the bio test and now we are in the bio lab. So gonna, what are we studying today, you ask? We're gonna be studying human impacts on the environment. So from a scientific perspective, we're basically gonna be understanding the the detriment the I think kind of detrimental effects and probably some good we can try to do to um, reverse those bad things we've done so um, I'm excited are you excited hopefully <laughs> You don't particularly care about the Barbary Lion or the St. Helena Oliver, the passenger pigeon, or anything else we've driven into extinction. The thing is, we need these other organisms. The ecosystems of the world are working very hard for us every day, filtering water, sucking carbon dioxide out of the air, producing all the food we eat, all very important ecosystem services benefits that the natural world provides us for free. So having ecosystems and keeping them intact is important not only for the organisms who live in them, but also for us, the <coughs> animals who rely on them for thousands and thousands of things that we could never do for ourselves. Over the next two episodes, we're going to look at these systems and how our actions are affecting the ecosystems that we need for our survival. Basically, we're messing up the environment six ways from Sunday, but to make it easy on ourselves, let's start with the top five. Awesome. You often hear about all the different ways that our behavior is affecting the biosphere, extinctions, climate change, deforestation, acid rain, desertification, pollution, and more. But you're asking, oh, well, why are all those things bad? What's going on? How is this stuff turning the earth into sausage? I don't understand. Well, I do understand. Which
exhale and that your car belches out, which in turn helps regulate the climate. And finally, number four, ecosystems are just kind of awesome. It's nice to be surrounded by happy plants and critters doing their business. Nice, robust ecosystems give us places to play, scenes to inspire us, and things to just discover and learn about. These are their less tangible but still important cultural services. An interesting thing about ecosystem services is that economists actually can and do calculate the monetary value they provide for humanity. If, for example, we had to do all of the things that ecosystems do for us, it would cost us $46 trillion per year, which is a lot considering that the output of the global economy is $66 trillion per year. So yeah, we should be happy that we're not, we don't have to pay for all that. But you'll notice I keep saying that ecosystems can only serve up all this awesome sauce if they are intact. By that, I mean, they specifically have to have their biodiversity intact. And apparently it looks like this is the last lap for bio. Thank you. And in the last lap for chem, which we saw, that's the last one. Damn. <laughs> who who would have thought? Who would have thought? Okay, so, look, so yeah, we learned about some bad things um, happening in the environment. So, not good. But so... But hopefully we've learned something and we're all gonna, you know, try to do better and not be terrible humans. So. <laughs> okay guys, so apparently someone wants to say hi to the vlog. Okay guys, so as you can currently see, I finished the bio lab, obviously. I'm just doing some stats homework. But that looks like it's gonna, that's gonna do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please like this video and subscribe if you want to keep seeing more videos from me. Also, if you guys do want to see more content that isn't on my YouTube channel, then please do go to the link down below in the description so you can check out my social media if you want to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, or Snapchat, or TikTok. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye!